Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a tropical storm hits the crossroads with heavy rain expected throughout the day. A pre-trial hearing in the Amanda Johnson murder case is tomorrow in Matagorda County. And today is Juneteenth, celebrations of the holiday all over the country. Tropic storm Alberto finally moved ashore and strengthened just enough. You can see how the big surge of moisture all the way from Waco down into northern Mexico. It's a weak storm, but it's really big. We'll talk more about it, what to expect coming up in a moment. And the Astros and Rangers continue to lose ground in the West and the Aggies in the College World Series semifinal. I'll have that score coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brube. And I'm Karina Garcia. Today is an alert day. Victoria has declared it a disaster area for us. Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis has the latest. Well, here's the alert day that we kept telling you about. It is here for sure, and all of uh, the southern half of the state is basically being affected. Now, the tropical storm warning continues, so what we're having more problems is right along the immediate coastline. The uh, beach water or the surf came up very high in many communities, all the way from Brazoria County down into Corpus Christi. Now, the inland areas are picking up the heavy rain, and you can see how we've got flood watches all the way out into the western portions of the state. We are going to be under a flood watch for the next few days because all this water has got to come down and I don't want you to think that it's over just yet. Uh, we li likely get more storms overnight and tomorrow. So uh, let's just be careful and be weather aware. We'll have more on that coming up in just a moment. Mac, thank you. A tropical storm warning from the National Weather Service is in effect in Calhoun and Referio counties. That's all due to this tropical storm, Alberto. 25 News Now reporter Adarius McCormick is live in Calhoun County with the latest. Adarius? Yeah, so we're doing things a little unorthodox today. McClovio told you about the weather. Now I'm going to show you the weather. Right now we got some heavy wind. I'm out at Magnolia Beach, some heavy wind. And we got a little rain. It's not as much rain as I expected. I've seen a lot coming through Port Lavaca on the way here, but some severe flooding. Let me show you here. We got a man's golf cart, golf cart halfway underwater, and his truck as well is halfway underwater, and his RV is facing a lot of water as well. And the beach is, you can't see where the bay ends and the beach begins. There's so much flooding out here. And I don't know if you guys can even hear me. This wind is about to blow me away. It's so much wind. It's, I would just say if you're in the Port Lavaca area on the coast, be safe. Even near Victoria, it's a whole lot of rain coming our way. And this flood is pretty bad. And this wind is really, really strong. Reporting live in, at Magnolia Beach, I'm Adarius McCormick, KVU TV 25 News Now. Adarius, thank you. Several counties in the crossroads are part of a disaster declaration issued by Governor Greg Abbott. Calhoun, DeWitt, Goliad, Jackson, Lavaca, Matagoria, Referio, and Victoria counties are in the disaster declaration for this tropical storm. Now, this tropical storm Alberto causing flooding in the Padre Island area with strong winds and debris. DriveTexas.org reports several area highways are closed due to high waters. They include State Highway 183 and 239 near Goliad, along U.S. Highway 50. Goliad. State Highway 72 between Cuero and Yorktown, also shown to be impassable. Conditions continue to worsen in Matagorda. The beach road to Matagorda Island is flooded and becoming impassable. As of 5 o'clock this afternoon, AEP Texas reports 40 customers in Victoria County are out of power. 113 customers in Wharton County don't have power. AEP Texas urges all customers to consider any downed power line live and dangerous. Beach flooding caused by Alberto is happening at Surfside. Surfside Beach EMS said high water rescues are already underway. Also in Surfside Beach, the area on Fort Belasco towards the Jetty and Ocean Village Hotel are completely underwater. The city of Jamaica Beach posted more than 30 photos showing high water locations in the area. Several streets are already underwater. Residents have been seen kayaking through the area. Kayaking through yes, the area. Yes, yes. That's going to bring us to your viewer pool. You can scan that QR code right there. 
there on your screen to vote. The question is, are you experiencing flooding? Yes or no? According to our results, it looks like 11% stand at yes. I actually thought that number would be higher mm -hmm. and 89% stand at no. Thank you for voting. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. And of course, we're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 10. The FEMA Disaster Recovery Center in Calhoun County is closing Thursday. The Disaster Recovery Center at the Calhoun County Public Library, 200 West Mayhan Street, will close permanently at 7 p.m. Thursday. FEMA officials tell us over $200,000 has been approved by FEMA for Calhoun County residents and that hundreds of residents have applied for FEMA assistance. Now, if Calhoun County residents still need help from FEMA, they can call that number right there on your screen. That's 800 621 3362 or go online to disasterassistance.gov. The last day to apply for FEMA relief is July 16th. Now a pretrial hearing for the man accused in the Amanda Johnson murder case, Fernando Acosta Jr. comes Thursday in the Matagorda County Courthouse. Acosta turned himself into the Matagorda County Jail and is now out on bond. His bond was set at $500,000. On Sunday, April 18th of 2021, the Matagorda County Sheriff's Office found human remains in a burned out 2018 Ford Explorer. They confirmed the remains to be of Amanda Johnson. Victoria police arrested a 26 year old man Tuesday. William Jones of Victoria faces six charges, including sexual assault of a child in Bear County. In Victoria faces two counts of abandonment of a child with criminal neglect and money laundering. Jones is in the Victoria County Jail in lieu of $70,000 bond. Quero police arrested a 17 year old man Monday. Daniel Sweat faces 12 charges, including eight burglary of a vehicle charges and a charge of credit card abuse. He is in the DeWitt County Jail in lieu of $70,000 bond. This morning, Opal Lee, the grandmother of Juneteenth, celebrated the day with Opal's Walk for Freedom. That's right. The 2.5 mile walk started at the African American Museum in Dallas. Lee started the movement to make Juneteenth an official federal holiday when she was 89. She is now 97. Oval's Walk for Freedom symbolizes the two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. It took for news of freedom to reach enslaved people in Texas in 1865. Now, 26 black veterans boarded a plane in Atlanta to head to the Washington, D.C. area Wednesday. It's an honor for it's an honor for flighting to celebrate black service members on Juneteenth. They'll visit the World War II Memorial, Korean War Veterans Memorial, Vietnam Veterans Memorial, Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, as well as other landmarks. This is the first Juneteenth trip by the Honor Flight Network. The program created in 2005 flies veterans to Washington, D.C. free of charge to honor their service. Since then, it's taken nearly 300,000 veterans on the trips. Air tankers dropped water and red retardant on Wednesday on a pair of growing fires in mountainous New Mexico. Flames have killed at least one person, damaged more than 1,400 structures, forced thousands to flee a tourist locale, and may now threaten hundreds of firefighters amid high wind risks. Meteorologists say weather patterns were shifting Wednesday with possible rains later in the afternoon and evening, but there was also a risk of high winds that could pose a danger to firefighters. Here's some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca wave. The Port Lavaca City Council approved a plan for a new speedy stop and reappointed several board members. Calhoun County Commissioners approved an engineering agreement for a new pavilion at Bill Sanders Memorial Park. And Port Lavaca celebrates 50 years of Juneteenth festivals. You can read these stories and more at the PortLavacaWave.com. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket lifted from the Vandenberg Space Force Base late last night, carrying more Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. The payload included 20 Starlink satellites. 13 of those were direct to cell capabilities. The rocket's first stage separated as planned and about eight and a half minutes into the mission landed safely on a recovery ship in the Pacific called, of course, I still love you. SpaceX reports it was the fifth launch and landing for this particular booster. This was the 61 first orbital launch for SpaceX this year. If you have not seen episode number one, Let's Grow Texas Ag. It's a great program on the state of agriculture and the crossroads. You can catch it this week on KXTS this Friday at 10 p.m. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today, 
hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you can see Crossroads today where? On YouTube anytime, anywhere. That's right. The Ten Commandments will now be in every public school classroom in Louisiana. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, the new law signed by the governor of that state. Also ahead, ERCOT says the Texas power grid is ready for the heat this summer. Louisiana is now the first state to require that the Ten Commandments be displayed in every public school classroom. Governor Jeff Landry signed the bill mandating the display on Wednesday. The legislation mandates that a poster sized display of the Ten Commandments be required in all public schools from kindergarten to state funded universities. Louisiana classrooms must display the Ten Commandments by the start of 2025. Sun experts now say Boeing could face criminal consequences related to several air disasters. It's been under a deferred prosecution agreement stemming from crashes in 2018 and 2019. The Justice Department says it violated that when a door plug flew off a plane back in January. Now an explosive new allegation is amplifying calls for prosecution. They throw all of their safety rubrics out the window. Some family members of Boeing victims are demanding the company face prosecution. Now signs are emerging they might get their wish after an explosive revelation tied to a Senate hearing yesterday. Whistleblower Sam Mohawk alleges Boeing hid substandard parts from the FAA, lost track of them, and likely installed them on planes. You need to make sure that every part that's ever manufactured on these airplanes, it's not a bogus part. Boeing says it's reviewing Mohawk's claims. It also says it has complied with a deferred prosecution agreement stemming from crashes in 2018 and 19. In it, Boeing effectively promises to do better. The chair of the Senate Investigation Subcommittee argues it has violated that agreement, and some experts agree. We've heard from whistleblower after whistleblower that there is almost this sweatshop mentality on the Boeing factory floors. Boeing CEO says the company is working to change, and he addressed victims' families yesterday. I would like to apologize on behalf of all of our Boeing associates spread throughout the world. For many who lost loved ones in those 2018 and 19 crashes, those words aren't enough. That safety, that number one priority of Boeing doesn't mean anything when 346 people died. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Here's a look at the top headlines you can find in your Quero record. Adam Arroyo was appointed to the Quero City Council at large seat. Plus, the Quero class of 1987 gets ready for a class reunion. Read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com.
I think Adam was in that class, actually. Uh, <laughs> the head of the state's power grid said Texas is ready for the hotter temperatures in the months ahead. ERCOT CEO Pablo Vega said the highest risk time will be in August from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. due to hotter temperatures, along with an increased reliance on renewables. Vega said the grid has added new power generation since last year, when Texas had its second hottest summer in history. ERCOT estimates that's enough to power 2 million more homes. If you missed Storm Prep 2024, here are some other dates and times you can catch the show this weekend. On KAVU, Saturday, June 22nd at 1230 p.m. KMOL, Sunday, June 23rd at 1130 a.m. KVCT, Sunday, June 23rd at 1230 p.m. And KXTS, Saturday, June 22nd at 11 a.m. Well, good evening, everyone. Yes, it's still stormy out there. It's, uh, shall we say, it's just ramping up. I mean, this is going to continue all night into tomorrow. So we continue with the uh, watches and warnings. We're at 77 degrees, obviously, because of the cloud cover and the rain. 78 was our high, but officially out at the airport, we've had 1.34 inches of rain so far. Actually, we're probably going to get a lot more than that, maybe double that number by the time this is all over. So we'll be talking about how to stay ready for this coming up in just a moment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, here's the alert day that we've been promising you. Uh, it is still, uh, shall we say, not over. It really just started going today. We still expect three to seven inches of rain in the uh, crossroads area. Of course, the coastal winds have been up to about 45 miles an hour today. It's uh, for today and tomorrow, and we finally get a break on Thursday, and it's pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's amazing, really. Uh, the storm is going into Mexico, 400 miles south. This is Surfside up in Freeport, Brazoria County. The surge was so high that pretty much the whole uh, island there uh, has been covered with water. And in today's world where everybody has a drone and a camera, it's amazing how you know, much video we can get out of this, but pretty amazing how the surfs came up all the way across. Now that makes you happy that you have a house built on stilts, doesn't it? And of course, it's also a practice for um, when uh, the uh, tropical storm threatens the Texas coast. So here we are 400 miles away from the center of that storm. Now, here's Victoria, as you can see right about there. There's going to be a little bit of a break, and I don't want you to get too excited. Uh, there, here's the break I'm talking about. You see the clearing skies out to the west. This is all going in this direction. And so uh, we'll get a chance at least to dry off. But it's not completely over with because there are going to be bands kind of like this one right here that are going to develop over the area. Now, if we're lucky, we don't have too much of a problem. But if we're not going to be unlucky, we'll be in one of these bands that'll 
produce really heavy rainfall. That's why that seven inch number is still out there for additional rainfall. Now we continue under the tropical storm warning for the coastal counties all the way uh, to the Brownsville area. So it's pretty much everybody uh, along the water's edge. And we've had a lot more marine damage um, today than, than really I expected. I mean, still uh, we've got coastal flooding. That's one thing. We've had 40, 50 mile an hour winds along the coastline. And then you saw that surge of water moving ashore and storm surge is something we have to worry about. Now this is the actual rainfall that fell. For us, uh, about an inch and a half, almost two inches so far. But you can see how the counties along, even from, uh, <laughs> where's this, Galveston Island, all the way south, uh, they've had the three to four inch range and even heavier stuff down south of uh, Corpus Christi. Now, Corpus Christi had a lot of uh, surge water as well. Uh, and even places like Kingsville, which is not on the water, is having a lot of street flooding uh, out there as well. So where is it going and where is it now? Well, let's go to the big picture and I'll show you. Here's Alberto coming ashore, finally cranked up to uh, category one yesterday. The whole Gulf of Mexico is being streamed by all that tropical surge. And, and uh, you've got to remember, remember the, our heat wave? The fact that it moved to the northeast is what allowed this thing to come on shore. And you can see the all that tropical moisture headed up into our area. Now, Rockport, four inches of rain. Port O'Connor, 2.1. Port Lavaca, 2.2, Matagorda, almost four inches as well. And the next few days, well, heavy rain is still expected overnight, although it may be more, we call them discrete thunderstorms or just little pockets, okay? But it's not over with, and it's not until Friday that you see a little bit of a break, a decrease slight over the weekend, but it's not completely over because, oh, by the way, these are all uh, reports of local storm damage. So, you know, from Corpus Christi uh, through Lavaca Bay and all the way up uh, to uh, uh, Beaumont, probably. Uh, tonight, stormy weather through the night. It'll be very cautious in the morning on county roads. We may have flooding to deal with. And then we've got two more alert days, which is tomorrow and Friday before we get a little bit of break over the weekend, but it's not completely over because the more isolated showers are expected. That's your seven day forecast reminding everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that, put Crossroads today on your phone and I'll toss it over to Karina. Thank you, Mac. And now here's Zach Brown with your sports. Texas A&M will take on the Florida Gators later on tonight in the College World Series semifinal. I'll have that coming up in sports.
The Houston Astros hit the road to take on the Chicago White Sox last night. Chicago is the worst team in baseball with the worst pitching staff. And while the Astros should have feasted, they starved. They had seven hits and no runs in the ball game. Astros pitching allowed only two hits in just two runs. But the Astros offense sputters. Houston gets shut out on the road. Their record now sits at an awful 33 and 40. We had a wild one in Arlington yesterday. Tied it two until Josh Smith cranked a three-run bomb out to right. That's going to put Texas on top five to two. Now with two outs in the inning, Wyatt Langford. He's going to go yard himself. This one a solo shot. Texas suddenly with a commanding six to two lead, but the Mets would not go away in the eighth. It's a six-four ball game. Two runners on. This one splits the gap. One runner walks home and Starling Marte right behind him scores from first. We're all tied at six apiece in the eighth and in the ninth. An RBI double that's just fair down the left field line gives the Mets a seven to six lead. Five unanswered runs and the Mets still a win from the Rangers. Texas also with a record of 33 and 40. Last night on the road, the Victoria Generals hit the road to take on the Brazos Valley Bombers. They had a double header. They dropped game one, but they took game two. Final score in this one. Four to two. The Generals have been fantastic of late. Now winners of nine of their last 12. They return home tomorrow should weather permit. I'm guessing I'll stay tuned for that and let you guys know. The Texas A&M Aggies continue their path in the College World Series. They will take on the Florida Gators tonight in the semifinals. The game start was pushed back to 655 after originally being scheduled to start at six. We'll see if the Aggies can pull out another win over the Florida Gators later this evening. Some sad news yesterday in baseball. The Say Hey Kid Willie Mays has passed away at the age of 93. Mays was a 24-time All-Star, 12-time Gold Glover, and has his number retired by the Mets and Giants. He won the NL MVP twice, and he hit 660 home runs in his career. His 500th career home run happened at the Astrodome in Houston, according to KHOU's Jason Bristol. That is it for your sports. Donna Karina, back to you. Thanks, Zach. We're back in a moment. A huge mural now ready for viewing in Michigan.
Finally tonight, a Spanish artist is brightening the skyline in Michigan. Okuda San Miguel recently finished his work on this massive mural. It was made on some abandoned silos in the historic Old Town neighborhood of Saginaw. The mural is part of the Shine Bright Saginaw Mural Project to help beautify the city. Miguel said that for the project, he tried to mix different designs, including digital patterns, with geometric shapes. His team included five Michigan artists who added their own touches to the project. Very That's cute. a lot of painting spray, there. A lot of spray cans. A lot of <laughs> spray cans. Yeah, I mentioned uh, to the, you, Mac, the, uh, we got an email from a viewer in Port Alto mm -hmm. showing his uh, rain gauge three inches. Yep. And I'll bet you a lot of rain gauges in the crossroads had yeah. three inches or more. We got reports from McFadden that had about three inches as well. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the rain's coming down, folks. It's not over with. In fact, it's going to be a stormy night. And if you're driving tonight, do be very cautious. Tomorrow morning, I'd wait till sunrise before you start rolling on any county roads because we may have flooding problems overnight. The uh, alert day continues for tomorrow with more thunder showers, and then it begins to taper off on Friday. By that time, it's not the incoming thunder showers, it's the downflowing floodwaters that we're going to be watching. So it's, uh, we sort of change our effect. And you know what? All this rain goes down as Tropical Storm Alberto hitting us. Yes. He's 400 miles away. <laughs> That's a big storm. That's a it's very a big storm for a tropical storm. It hit another country and it's affecting us. Yeah. It's a great lot strange. of places. Yeah, yeah. How that works. All right, Meg, thank you and thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.